G'day, Mike from Australian Mountain Bike. I've been testing the Merida Big 9 SLX Edition uh, hardtail recently. Uh, this is a really popular bike in the global market. The Big 9 marquee has seen a lot of people get into mountain biking. It's been a real gateway bike for a lot of riders. The SLX Edition brings an SLX group set, as you'd imagine, to a $1,999 price point. So let's take a closer look uh, at what this alloy hardtail can do. So let's take a look at the features of the Merida Big 9 SLX Edition. So it's a smooth welded aluminium frame uh, with a 100mm uh, Manitou Marco uh, lockout suspension fork up the front. Uh, it's a boost spacing fork with 135mm quick release in the back end. Uh, it doesn't have a dropper post on it, but it does have cable routing for one and the cable routing is internal as well. So it is a nicely put together bike for a cross country use with a 12 speed Shimano SLX group set and some Shimano brakes on there as well. So the frame does have mounts for either a rack or fenders. So it is actually quite a versatile bike. It could be something to look at if you wanted to do something like some rail trail adventures or bike packing. It does have a maximum of 2.25 inches for uh, rubber in the back end. So let's have a look at the geometry and handling. The Merida Big 9 has a real classic cross-country geometry. So that means a 70 degree head angle and 73 degree seat angle. Uh, it's a pretty short reach on this, just over about just over 410 mil on large. Bear in mind this bike goes up to a double extra large, uh, so you can accommodate quite a wide variety of, of, of sizes of people on this one. Plus there's the Big 7 if you prefer the 27 and a half inch wheel. What this translates to on the trail is you end up with a bike that's quite agile. I'm not going to say it's twitchy at all because what Merida then do, and this is slightly older geometry if, if that's not what you're used to, is you run a longer stem and a wider flat bar. So it all kind of evens out. It's still not going to be the bike that you want for hauling down steep rock gardens, but for an agile cross-country bike to use for some cross-country adventures and big all-day rides out on fire trails and back roads, it's bang on. In terms of ergonomics, I quite like how Merida have put this bike together. Uh, while it is steeper and shorter than some other bikes that you might find in that kind of $1,000 to $2,000 price range if you're looking at a hardtail, by matching it with a slightly longer stem and the wide 760mm bars, everything just falls into place. I found it really easy to get on and pedal, um, and with the high-end uh, group set on there, the SLX shifters work really nicely, uh, and the MT4000 brakes, uh, it's easy enough to get them set with their i-spec mount, so you can have the shifters and the brake levers exactly where you want them. In addition to that is the overbar mounted lockout for the Manitou fork, which is really easy to actuate for a rock solid lockout on the air sprung fork. So for components, it shouldn't be a big surprise that the Merida Big 9 SLX edition comes with a whole lot of Shimano SLX. There are all sorts of other builds in the Big 9 range, uh, but the SLX edition at $19.99 comes with an almost complete Shimano SLX group set. So that includes the crank with an easily replaceable chainring, whether you want to go bigger or smaller or just uh, replace it when it gets damaged or worn. It does have a Dior 12-speed cassette and then an upgrade Shima upgraded Shimano XT rear derailleur. So this is top quality stuff and it means it shifts really well under load uh, and it should do really well even after a couple of years with some regular servicing. I also like that the brakes use the Shimano iSpec mount which basically puts two mounting points on the bar or, or I guess a point where it leverages from. Makes for very stiff braking uh, for the lever feel. Um, the fork is the Manitou Marco with a 100mm of travel. It's got an air spring, which means you can easily adjust it just with a shock pump for, to suit your riding and your weight. And there is also rebound adjust on the bottom of the fork leg and with the remote lockout up the top. I have found that the fork isn't that well damped for, for even when you're adjusting the, uh, the air spring, that it really pushes through a lot of its travel a lot, but I'll go into that a little bit later. Wheels on uh, the Merida are a fairly narrow own brand rim. It does help keep the weight down, but it's a 20 mil internal, which is, is pretty skinny in the world of mountain bikes. Um, and with a classic Maxxis Icon tire on there. Now I've probably ridden an Icon for about 10 years, but this Icon has a really thin sidewall. Uh, and so I have to run quite high pressure to get the stability for riding off-road on this set of wheels. Okay, and the million dollar question, or the $1,999 question. How does the Merida Big 9 SLX Edition ride? 
Well, let's take a look. Partly, you'd be forgiven for thinking it's gonna be a nervous, overly lightweight cross-country hardtail. But the reality is, bikes had this kind of geometry for years because it does work. And it's not that different to what I was racing until about 2019. So it might be a little bit steeper and shorter, but it still works on the trails. So it climbs like a dream and made short work of rolling fire trails, a nicely prepared single track where you're just shooting from left to right through the trees on some nice buff trails. That kind of riding is a whole lot of fun. So zipping corner to corner, um, stabbing the pedals to get a little bit more speed for the small step ups is, is all taken in a stride to something like the big nine. Out of the saddle, hauling on the bars up a climb. Again, the big nine really responds well to that. On faster descents, like a steady hand, you still kind of need to be taking control of the bars a bit more because it is a little bit easier for the bike to get out of hand. And as long as it's smooth, it's pretty good. Where you're getting extended rock gardens, um, and even if they're like fairly manicured ones or larger step downs, that's kind of where you can get into a little bit of trouble. So I did find that the Manito fork, even with up to 20 or 30% more pressure than would be recommended for my rider's weight, it was still under damped and would push through the travel too much. And the rebound damping couldn't quite uh, keep it in check for the control that I would want uh, for riding some more demanding trails. So there's a little bit of a, uh, a, a factor that might hold you back on some of the more aggressive trails, which really start to move beyond the performance window of what the Merida Big Nine is designed for anyway. Um, so that kind of came up also in fast transitions, so be it a, a V-ditch or a G-out, or really pushing into a corner and loading up the front. And that's where I kind of noticed that the tire sidewall didn't have the stability that I was after. So you could feel it rolling and feel a bit of flex through the 32 mil legged fork as well. Again, at that point, you're probably pushing out of what the Big Nine is designed for and more into what the Merida Big Trail is designed for. Uh, and at the same price, you could get the Merida Big Trail, which is a trail hardtail with 140 mil travel fork, wide rims, more aggressive tires, and in general is a great trail hardtail. One of those wasn't available when I um, got this to test, but if you're definitely after a more trail centric hardtail, the Big Trail lineup would be what to, what to look at. What I really liked about riding though is how fantastic the whole bike worked together as a whole. So that goes from really reliable shifting and braking to just being a very smooth riding bike. It's top quality gear on it and that does have an impact on, on how it rides and the enjoyment you get out of that too. So if you're gonna be after something that's a nice fast riding lightweight bike, then the Merida Big Nine SLX Edition is probably a great one to look at. So here's my take on the Merida Big Nine SLX Edition. It's a top quality group set from Shimano on a really popular style mountain bike frame, but it is definitely destined more for the cross country handling uh, to endurance riding uh, frame set. I guess that one way of thinking that is if you need a bike that you need to meet up with your friends for a trail ride before work at six, but be in the office at 8.30 without changing bikes, it's probably a good bike. You can blast some trails and then jump on the bike path and get straight into the office in time. Or maybe you're somebody who wants to get something for a multi-day rail trail adventure, going from town to town, carrying what you need and loading it up on a, on a rack or maybe some uh, bike packing luggage. Again, this is gonna do that really well. And the reason is that's all lots of hours on the bike and the SLX drivetrain on here, plus the brand name fork and, and uh, quality brakes on here too, will all do well with servicing over a long time period. So they're gonna be really reliable. But if you're after a trail hardtail, something designed for the more aggressive purpose-built trails, I don't think this is the bike for you. And again, if you're looking for something that's gonna be uh, chasing some friends down the sides of mountains, you need to look at something else. And where I would look within the same budget would be something like the Merida Big Trail 500, which is also 1999 and would be right up the alley if you're after trail hardtail. As it is, if you're after a cross country handling bike for endurance use, a uh, bit of mixed use on bike paths, rail trails, and some really buff single track, this is, this is gonna be for you and you're gonna have a lot of fun riding it as well. If you have any more questions about the Merida Big Nine SLX Edition, please drop them in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe and you can catch all our videos as we release them.